Hey there, welcome to this week's episode. And this week I will be talking about the Olympus E300, which is a 4 thirds CCD sensor camera from 2004. Cameras like this E300 have been getting a lot of hype uh, recently, especially older Digicams with CCD sensors like this one. And I'm just very curious to learn if the hype is justified uh, or not. So that's what I want to talk about. So let's dive in. The Olympus E300 or EVOLT E300 in North America is an 8 megapixel digital SLR released back in 2004. It was the second camera after the E1 to use the 4 3rd system. The E300 seems quite popular in the old, vintage if you will, Digicam's niche, first and foremost for its much hyped codex CCD sensor, but certainly also for its quirky looks and perhaps also for its not so standard sideways swinging mirror. Not totally insensitive to hype, I've been interested in this camera for a while now. And some time ago I was able to get my hands on one, along with some lenses and an original battery grip. So as always with these sort of hyped cameras, I've been wondering, is the hype justified? Is that CCD sensor really as special as some say? And is a camera like this still usable in 2023? Now, I'm no expert in the matter, but I do have some first-hand experience and I'd love to share my findings with you. So let's go outside and dive right in. How well does this camera actually do in the field? Now, my default shooting style is pretty simple. I set my camera on manual mode manual aperture, manual shutter speed, manual ISO. I set the white balance to auto and I shoot in RAW. With the E300, however, I find that manually controlling that exposure triangle is pretty difficult. First off, the E300 has only one control dial and jumping between the aperture and shutter speed requires an extra step to change what you control with that dial. And that's not too practical to do without looking. Secondly, the metering of the E300 isn't quite up to par with modern cameras, to put it mildly. But more about that later. As for the ISO, I do set that manually on the E300. By default, your settings are either ISO 100, 200 or 400, with the option of extending it up to 1600 in boost mode. However, you want to keep the ISO as low as possible on this camera for the best results. So, I aim at 100 whenever I can, only going slightly up when at risk of getting unsharp images otherwise. This camera doesn't have a live view option, so the only way to shoot it is using the optical viewfinder. It takes a bit of getting used to if you're not familiar with it, but I find the experience super satisfying. It might simply be because it's different to what I'm used to, but using that optical viewfinder and also having a very limited amount of storage available, much like if you were shooting with film, and really everything about this camera and its limitations makes using it so joyful and it reminds me a lot of using analog cameras. The experience of using a camera consists of many parts, one of which is the sound of the shutter. And while that may sound pretty insignificant to some, I find the sound of the shutter really important in how I experience using a camera. The sound of this Olympus E300 is glorious. It is so thoroughly satisfying that it brings an instant smile to my face whenever I press that shutter button. Fortunately though, the E300 experience offers much more than just one of the most satisfying shutter sounds I've ever heard. Much more in fact. It's build, for example, is really nice. It may look somewhat bulky and oddly shaped, but it feels really good in hand. And it is quite light at that. If you combine it with the 25mm f2.8 pancake lens, it's pretty much like carrying a lightweight mirrorless camera, like an Olympus pen with one of their small lenses. Morning everyone. I'm here shooting another early morning with the Olympus uh, E300. So before before it gets really uh, 
good and I start shooting. Uh, there's a few things I, that are worth mentioning. So I've been shooting the E300 mostly at aperture priority. I'm also trying out P mode, not manually controlling everything. It does mean you have to rely on the um, in-camera mirroring. And I would say it's quite hit and miss. Um, you really have to be very careful to, uh, to help the mirroring get the scene right, especially uh, making sure you don't overexpose because I find that it's much easier to, uh, to lift the shadows a bit in post than it is to try and recover any of the uh, blown out highlights because it, it goes completely white without any detail quite quickly, uh, I find. So hopefully I won't get a lot of that uh, this morning, but if I do, I'll, I'll show you some examples too so that you can see the difference. So after using this camera for a while now, do I think it lifts up to its height? Well, as for that Kodak CCD sensor, I'm not totally convinced of it being as unique as some make it out to be. I mean, it's nice, I enjoy the color rendering of the E300 a lot, but I get the same sort of feel with these files as I do with the Olympus EP1 for example, which also has that somewhat film-like rendering. Unlike the E300 however, the EP1 has a live mass sensor, so I'm seeing a nice bird formation in the sky there. And I'm hoping we'll be able to catch any of that. So I am wondering how much of it can be attributed to that Kodak CCD sensor, or if it's perhaps something else as well. Or maybe it is the Kodak CCD sensor. And perhaps that live MOS sensor in the EP1 is just more like a CCD sensor than it is like a CMOS one. Who knows? Either way, I don't personally feel that the CCD sensor is the big seller here with this camera. I personally rarely use a straight out of camera JPEGs as I enjoy post processing my images. And sensor qualities aside, I wonder how much of a difference there is in the final results between images from either this CCD sensor, a live MOS sensor or a CMOS sensor as newer Olympus cameras have. In my experience, all of the raw files are easy to work with in post and while I do notice subtle differences between cameras and their specific raw output, it is in no way so decisive that I would prefer one over the other. But then again, your mileage may vary. I could imagine that if straight out of camera JPEGs is your thing and that's what you'd compare, you may experience a serious difference and advantage of a sensor like this Kodak CCD one. As for the image quality coming out of the E300, I think the files are beautiful. Honestly though, that doesn't come as much of a surprise. I've used older digital cameras for a long time now and I find that the importance of endless amount of megapixels and whatnot is often greatly exaggerated. Sure, bigger sensors and more megapixels generally allow for more detail, improved dynamic range and better low light performance. But the extent to which they do, and just how much that actually matters for on-screen use or in small to medium sized prints, isn't as significant as we're sometimes led to believe. So as for these 8 megapixel files, I'm very happy with them. They're beautiful, easy to post process and they hold up well both on-screen as in small to medium sized prints. Of course they're not totally up to par with what you'd get out of a modern DSLR or mirrorless digital camera. And you shouldn't expect them to be. Early DSLRs like this E300 were pioneers in the digital camera landscape and compared to what's available these days, they can't compete in pretty much any spec. Using a camera like the E300 isn't about that. On the contrary, I'd say. And the experience of using this Olympus E300 has done anything but let me down. I love using this camera, I love its shutter sound and I love how it feels in hand. I love all of the limitations of this camera and what that means for using it. Simplifying the experience to a super direct, super involved process. With very little automation or assistance. It feels very pure and honest because of that. And as such, it's a breath of fresh air compared to all of the modern smart devices we use every day. So just how good are these prints? Well, let's take a look at them. I hope you get a, an understanding of their size like this. 
so for comparison <laughs> next to my face but this this paper is um matte paper and a four size i would say that this is about the maximum size i would print these at yeah so like i said i think they came out quite okay i wouldn't print them bigger than this uh, i did try a few bigger than this i don't have them at hand unfortunately but i found you quickly lose uh, lose detail when you go bigger so um so i wouldn't do that i also wouldn't sell these prints uh, to be honest but for personal use and you know just to, to test what they're capable of i think i think they're uh, pretty decent better than i expected for these uh, 8 megapixel files so two of these so the one with the clouds if you can see it like this i used ai denoise uh, in lightroom and i did it for this one the long exposure is a handheld long exposure by the way so pretty happy how that came out pretty pretty sharp in the trees and everything car obviously not when <laughs> it was on purpose so it has a little bit less noise but this shot uh, from the evening evening sky I didn't use the noise on this one and it's still pretty good I hope you can sort of see um, in, this, in this top view no, it's definitely not bad. All right, there you go. I could keep on talking about the E300 for hours more, but I won't, uh, don't worry. I went over the shooting experience, the image quality. I showed you how it prints and told you a lot about the experience I have with it, the way I shoot it, what I think you can and cannot expect from it. I hope that helped. I hope it was informative, entertaining perhaps. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. It would really help my channel. So I'm curious to hear what you think of this camera or older Digicams slash CCD cams in general. Do you have any? Are you considering them? Do let me know in the comments below. Hope to see you here again next week. Bye.